When I came in to work early, I was greeted by Paul walking past with his arms full of empty cages. The air smelled of more hand sanitizer than usual. Good morning, he said. All of the politicians hate us, and three of the cats are pregnant. Seriously? I asked his retreating back. This is getting ludicrous. Welcome to today, Anne said sourly, trailing after him. Today sucks. I see that, I said. So now what? We're watching the news in the break room, Anne told me. At least no one spotted a citizen animal running around lost. Small mercies, I said, falling in behind her. The authorities would be really upset about that. I hadn't spent much time with any of the more intelligent non-human earthlings, the ones who had been granted galactic citizenship alongside us, but I knew the protocols and the history books about the uproar caused by that decision made for good reading. Hopefully we can avoid a brouhaha now, I thought grimly, but it's not looking good. The break room was full of people who had arrived even earlier than I did. Well, to be fair, some were on the overlapping night shift and hadn't gone home yet. The room held more employees than it was meant to, human and turtle dillo both, with chairs pushed aside so we could all stand. I took a position at the back. I'm tall, even for a tall alien. This meant I was treated to the sight of Emiko and Fala making eyes at each other, which I would rather not have noticed. One of them was wearing deeply unfortunate perfume too. Stale flowers. There was a strict no dating the co-workers policy here. Couldn't risk a lover's spat making our species look bad. And as someone who had grown up completely uninterested in all of that, I just couldn't see what made it a tempting rule to defy. The news program popped up on the wall screen and everyone quieted. Breaking news, declared the newscaster. Human irresponsibility. Everything about the situation sounded dire. In a nutshell, yes, the lawkeepers and policymakers all had a much dimmer view of the Earth representatives. We'd given a statement that we weren't responsible, but the rumor mill was more powerful. The short clip of a top diplomat explaining our many levels of animal screening was followed up by a group of experts who all tried to outdo each other in their skepticism. Then came the footage from that drone I'd noticed. It showed in clear detail how many rabbits had been scampering around the field and how easily they evaded capture. The experts had a lot to say about that, too. Only when the point had been beaten into the ground that this was a disaster and we were incompetent did the reporters move on to a related segment. Apparently, the drone that had been watching the rabbit misadventure had spotted a mysterious area of fallen trees in the forest, only visible when it rose to max height. Other drones had come later to get as good a view as they could from this side of the property line. No one was turning the TV off, though they talked over it, so I kept watching. Surely this was related to the animal situation. It looked like a bunch of trees had been gently pushed aside. The muddy patch of grass in the middle was sunken, but it wasn't much of a crater. The reporters didn't know what to make of it and treated the thing like a bit of celebrity gossip weird gardening practices on private land, which just made it stranger since it had to be related. Oh, said a shocked voice at my shoulder. It's a smuggler ship. I turned to see Reed standing on a table to see over the crowd with a pole-axed expression on his turtly face. What smugglers? I asked as Emiko and Fala edged past to leave. Did they not tell you? Reed clicked his beak in surprise. I suppose they like to sanitize any reports of illegal goings-on. The local criminal element has been coming up with things that were clearly acquired off-world. No one has been able to pin down the details. And it's relatively recent from what I've heard. But that... He pointed at the depression in the trees. That looks to me like something fell from the sky and landed there. Yeah, but why isn't there a real crater? I asked. If a ship crashed from even tree height, there would be more of a hole than that. Anne joined the conversation, leaning around someone else who was leaving to go work. Inertial dampeners, she said. I'll bet cleaning duty on it. Inertial? Oh, I remembered now. Yeah, it probably is. 
When Reed asked what we off-worlders were talking about, I explained the bit of tech that some high-end ships had, basically space bumpers. I think it's based on the same stuff that led to gravity control, I said, though that's everywhere, and this is super expensive. Nah, it's a different tech base, Anne said. I heard that a species with incompatible machinery invented it, and it's expensive because the materials to make it work on other ships are hard to come by. Makes sense, I agreed. So the people smuggling contraband are well-funded, Reed said bitterly. Or they stole it from someone else. Either way, I don't like the odds of trying to catch them. Anne looked speculatively at the screen. Even worse if that ship's invisible. They've probably got visual shielding. So there are invisible spaceships? Reed asked. I thought that was an exaggeration. Well, yeah, they exist, I told him. But I doubt any of the ones coming here from Earth have visual shielding. Pretty much all the friendly species agree it's underhanded and dangerous to use. Space trash, Anne declared. Exactly the kind who'd make connections with local smuggling rings. I gestured at the screen, glancing at Reed. I can't believe the reporters aren't talking about this. Our higher-ups know ships exist that can take a bump without being seen, and of course, they would have told yours. It's hardly a secret. Is the smuggling a secret? Reed shook his head as more people filtered out of the room. The program was over. Everyone knows, he said, though the officials try not to talk about it. Oh, that's annoying, I said. They'd better start talking about it. And what about whoever owns that forest? Are they part of this smuggling ring but too rich and powerful to piss off? We should already have people in there searching for the animals. I couldn't say whether the property owner is involved or not, Reed said. But if permission to enter has not been granted, then the authorities can only breach the boundaries with proof of significant crimes. What about harboring illegal animals from off-world? I asked, pointing again at the screen. Which could easily bring disease, parasites, and environmental destruction with them. All that stuff the reporters are pinning on us. Is that not significant enough? Reed shrugged helplessly. Not if it's accidental. I'm sure someone's working on a workaround. Not quickly enough, Anne said. Not if the news didn't even say so. She stomped toward the door with her hands in the air. Everybody's going to keep blaming us. I'm not looking forward to any of this. I had to agree. Reed and I exchanged unhappy expressions before leaving the room to join the rest of the crew in tackling the workload that awaited us. The night crew had been busy, but there was still more to do than usual. Animals to care for, clean up after, triple check for fleas, and shuffle about in search of a better place to keep them all. Plus, helping Jazz meet fend off reporters and phone calls. When I stepped outside later, bringing a bag of trash to the dumpsters, which were just like the ones back on Earth, only half the height, I got a brief respite from all the rushing about. I took a deep breath, trash scented though it was, and appreciated the calm of the back lot. A familiar song drifted through the air. It was a recording with multiple voices and music coming from somewhere around the corner of the building. Sidewalks and a tree-lined sitting area lay in that direction. Someone out there had good taste. I tossed the trash and sang along with one of my favorite space shanties. What do we do with a stabby Roomba in the void between stars? Give him the best knife and some respect. The volume turned down as if whoever was listening to it had just realized that one of the voices wasn't from the recording. I kept singing as I walked toward the street. Way hey, and hit the warp drive, in the void between stars. When I rounded the corner, I found a trio of young adult turtle dillos with a music player and some very surprised expressions. Good choice of songs, I told them. They thanked me, embarrassed, and one asked if I could tell them what the words meant. The recording had been in English. Sure, it's an old song for space travel, about a cleaning robot that has knives taped to it. I paused. Actually, I'm surprised this made it past the censors. Where did you get it? Shifty looks. A friend. I see. And do you know where this friend got it? Another friend. We should be going, actually. Thank you. You have a good singing voice.
I said my own polite goodbyes as they scrambled away with the music player, turned off. I should have asked more questions, I thought. There's no way an official channel gave them a song about shanking the captain in the ankles. With a sigh, I turned back to the building. This was something new to discuss with my co-workers.